Ijincho, Yokohama, a harbor town where rotting secrets rarely stay uncovered. The deceased was a student teacher who had vanished from a high school Yagami was investigating. Yet the linchpin to this case, a police officer named Ohara, was arrested for a different crime, a train groping that shocked the nation. Upon hearing the verdict, Ahara gave the court an ominous revelation that the son he had lost was avenged. Before I go all in, can we go over the defendant's profile? That way I'll have something to work with. Sure. Akihiro Ahara. Age 53. Senior officer with Tokyo PD. Convicted of sexual battery. He'd been stationed in Shinjuku and lived alone in Tokyo. That is, until his arrest. Lived alone? Unmarried then? His wife moved to Yokohama without him seven years ago, when their son Toshiro started at Saverio High. Toshiro-kun ended up taking his life in his third year. That's four years ago, if you're counting. And the couple never reconciled, huh? Apparently his wife wanted nothing to do with him from that point on. That's it for personal details. All right. As for the charge, Ehar has maintained his innocence. We've had no luck getting him to budge. Mind you, the prosecution has plenty against him. Security camera surveillance, eyewitness footage, even trace evidence gathered on scene. The same footage the media was plastering on TV? Yes, although some of it was edited for privacy or length, but it painted a clear enough picture. Hard to dispute something you can see right in front of you. True. And what about when they handed down the verdict? The horror flew off the handle or something? Yeah, that's one way of putting it. You're on. In a warehouse, about three days ago, a body turned up in Yokohama. The body belongs to a guy named Hiro Mikushiba. Four years ago, this man took my son from me by driving him to commit suicide. Ehara seemed convinced that Mikushiba had bullied his son, and to get his justice, he even took Seiryu High to court. However, the court ruled against him, claiming there was no substantial evidence of bullying. I still need to dig into the court record of that case to see if there's anything of value. Sounds like I'm on deck then. I've got someone involved in the case right in front of me. Who? The chairman of Stereo High himself. Are you talking about me? I don't know how you pull these things off, Yagami-san. But let me give you a word of caution. I'm listening. Mikoshiba's murder hasn't been made public yet, so please don't go around talking about it. Especially at his school. The Kanagawa police will investigate the school soon enough. And if they find out everyone already knows... They'd show us the door, lock it behind them, and probably charge us with obstruction. Exactly. Oh, and before I send you Mikoshiba's photo, there's one last thing you should know. What's that? Ehara's ruling was the day before yesterday. That means we only have 13 more days to potentially file an appeal. If we don't make our move, Ehara will walk out of court with a sex offense charge and a minor slap on the wrist. And once his case is closed, it would take a miracle to get it reopened, even if there had been a critical oversight. Right. I'm sorry to give you a time limit instead of a viable solution. Don't worry. I'll have to make do. For now, let's just keep in touch. Thanks, and good luck. Yo, what was that about? <laughs> sorry. Give me one more sec. Actually, Kaito-san, can I fill you in later? I need to get some answers from the chairman. Hmm?
May I help you with something, Yagami-san? You sure can. Only thing is, where to start? Remember how you told me about a student teacher went missing? Oh, uh... This is him, right? Hiro Mikoshiba. How do you have that photo? But yes, that's him. I'd like to ask a bit about him, in relation to a separate investigation. What... what is it you need to know? Did something happen to him? I'm afraid I can't give you any details. This request comes from a very close colleague. I'm sure you understand. It's a matter of detective-client privilege. <sighs> I know that isn't much consolation. But if it's any comfort, I would never disclose anything about your case either. But don't you see? Mikoshiba-kun was officially reported missing. Please, can you tell me something? I promise. I'll tell you everything I can when I can. But for now, let me ask the questions. <sighs> Very well. Go ahead. I'll start with the basics. Mikoshiba-kun was a graduate here, correct? And that's why he came back to train as a teacher? That's correct. How long was he supposed to be here? Three weeks, originally. He'd nearly finished his time with us. But one day he simply stopped coming. It was as if all was well, then suddenly he was gone. Or at least that's how I'd heard it. Were you two not that close? No. We would had barely exchanged a word since he arrived. Wasn't there a pretty dark rumor about Mikoshiba-kun four years back? Something about how he drove a student to suicide? You mean what was dredged up online? Yes, I'm aware of it. However, in the subsequent lawsuit, that rumor was put to rest. The court found no evidence of bullying. But you had your doubts, didn't you? So you called on us to take a deeper look. Well, uh, yes. But let's not get confused. The tragedy from four years ago does weigh on us, but we've washed our hands of the matter. Well, you say that, yet I can't help circling back to the same question. Why would the head of a school hire detectives to monitor his students in secret, potentially even out of pocket? Well, for one thing, it would reflect poorly on our institution were I to openly suspect our students. Then there's the issue of bullying being recorded and shared online. You know what kind of firestorm that can cause. I should mention, I'm the one who takes the fall for it. My own privacy be damned. So of course I would opt for secrecy. That's fair. But what that still doesn't answer is why this is happening now. I'm... not sure I follow. Could this be what riled you up? But... but this is... This is footage of Akihiro Ihara two months ago, captured up in Tokyo. The man was an active duty police officer, so of course it made the rounds in the media. But you already knew all that. After all, he's the one who sued your school on account of what his son endured here. Bullying that led to suicide. Well, that's... Uh... Undeniable. And now that he's in the spotlight, any more problems at Serio would lead people to start connecting the dots. Uh. The police would dig up that suicide in no time, regardless of whatever the court had ruled. They might even reach the conclusion you had covered the whole thing up. I get the feeling that's why we're really here, to prevent another mess on your hands. Oh, I see now. Our job's to sniff out any bullying, then you sweep it under the rug. That's simply not true. At least, that wasn't my intention. You sure about that? The thought never even crossed your mind? <sighs> Perhaps it did. The scenario you described was... painfully accurate. Every time I saw Ihara-san on TV, I'd grow sick with worry that it could all boil over on us here at any moment. 
I can assure you, Chairman, I'm not here to cause any trouble. I only want to learn about Mikoshiba-kun. In that case, you should speak with Sawa-sensei. She was his teaching mentor. Her? Great. That's my luck. See? Oh, I told you we should have stayed on her good side. How was I supposed to know? Um, so, would you like me to call her back here? No, thanks. I should go see her myself. Do a bit of smoothing over. In that case, you may want to go downstairs and see if she's in the faculty room. She should still be on lunch. Perfect! I've got another chance to shoot my shot. Sorry, Kaito-san, but I'm fielding this one alone. Tsukumo, you guys can clear out too. What? You're benching all of us? Just like that? I don't understand the meaning of this, Yagamishi. If I had time to explain, I would. Just trust me on this for now. I'm sorry, did you need something, sir? Oh, uh, is Sawa-sensei here? She should be back shortly. May I ask who's waiting for her? Well, no one's special, really. I just need to have a quick word with her is all. Maybe you could tell me where her desk is? It's right over there, the one with all the English books. Thank you. doing here? I thought you'd have gone by now. Yes, well, I need to ask you a couple things. Such as? Such as how close you were to Hiromika Shiba. What? I heard from Chairman Okuda you were mentoring him as a teacher. I believe this was two months ago? What do you of all people want to know? Did you notice anything unusual before he disappeared? Any sign of trouble he might have had? I can't say for sure. He just stopped showing up one day. Really, that's all I know. Uh, is that really all you can tell me? Nothing jogging the memory? I said that's all. You know what, let's start over. Why don't we talk about him as a student? You were already a teacher here by then, weren't you? Mm-hmm. Back when a student here committed suicide, there were rumors online about how it could have been caused by bullying. And Miko Shiba-kun's name came up as one of the potential bullies. Yes, but those were just rumors. So he wasn't involved in any teasing? I teach English, and that's what I was focused on. So, as far as I knew, Miko Shiba-kun was a good student with solid grades back then. And during his time in training, I was under the impression he got along with the students just fine. He's not the type to bully, then? I would say... no. Then why would those rumors exist in the first place? You're asking the wrong person. Four years ago, the court determined this school was not responsible for a bullying-related suicide. You mean Ahara-san's lawsuit? The father of the student who died and an officer in Tokyo? 
He was arrested the other day. Well, I'm sure you've seen the news. Yes, but what of it? What exactly is the point you're trying to make here? I believe Ahara-san still thinks his son killed himself because of Mikoshiba-kun. Let me ask you something, Yagami-san. By all means. What are you trying to accomplish? Didn't you finish this whole business with the chairman? If that wasn't enough, you got security called on you. You clearly have zero regard for anyone here. You should have had the sense to leave long before now. Believe me, once I learn what I need about Mikoshiba-kun, I'm gone. In that case, you've already got everything you need from me. Uh, one last question. You and the chairman both mentioned how Mikoshiba-kun got along with the students here. Anyone in particular that he was close to? <sighs> the kids in the basketball club? Mikoshiba-kun was in that club back when he was a student. Apparently he was showing up to their practices. The basketball club. That includes the gang from before, right? Yes. They all spent quite a bit of time with him. All right. With that, I'll get out of your hair. Appreciate your time, man. Uh, Sawa-sensei. Uh, just a minute! <sighs> Kaito-san, you there? Tell me you're still on campus. Why? You suddenly decide you need me after all? Man, don't be like that. You enjoy playing teacher's pet with Sawa-sensei? You mean, did I enjoy getting eviscerated by her? She hates my guts at this point. That aside, I did get some interesting intel. And that's where you come in. Huh? What for? I want to find those bullies in the basketball club. Think you can fly the pigeon for me? <laughs> so I do have a purpose. Ain't that something? All right, then. It's drone time. Thanks. I'll start scoping out the gymnasium. Close one. I almost got it. Huh? You're Kodasan from Class 2 too, right? Basketball too? Yeah. You have a second? I um, have some questions about a student teacher who taught classes here in Mikoshiba. Huh? Oh! Oh, really? Yo, you read me talk? That posse of little shitheads just went strutting into the gym with some bats. Kaito-san. Can you at least try to warn me a little sooner next time? Why? You worried? Hey! Why are you still here, asshole? Who the hell are you, anyway? Talking pretty big for taking a cheap shot while my back was turned. You had it coming, shady old fuck! Coda! Hey, you been spilling anything to this guy? I didn't say anything. I'll fill you in. I was asking her about Miko Shiba, a student teacher who disappeared from school not too long ago. You guys know him, right? The basketball club would. Don't bother trying to talk to us like we're your fucking friends, asshole. I want to bash your fucking skull in. You'll die before I tell you shit. You wiped the floor with us yesterday. Only fair for you to take a handicap. I don't mind at all. 
Sure. All good. But it's still gonna be pretty one-sided. You're so full of shit. I'm gonna kick your ass! You've got a lot of guts for your age, kid. But come on. You really need a better outlet for all that aggression. Let me go! Just what on earth is going on in here? Hey. Let's roll out. I'm gonna do you a favor here and leave out the part about the bats. Huh? Are you even listening? Yes, ma'am. We were just horsing around a bit. Right? <laughs> just horsing around is right. You really are unbelievable. Why are you attacking defenseless students on their school property? How many times must I tell you to leave our school alone? For what it's worth, the chairman asked me to be here. Oh, good. Let's drag him into this. How should our chairman explain you to the mob of irate parents that will be at his door any second now? Don't worry, there's a very good reason we hired these ragtag detectives to spy on and beat up your kids. Not the words I'd use. If I hear anything else about you, anything, I'm going straight to the press. I'm under no obligation to cover for anyone. Oh, and your attire is atrocious. When you show up at a school, at least try to look the part. Now go home! You hear all that, Kaito-san? I have a funny feeling I'm not wanted here. Can I talk to the chairman real quick? I'm afraid Sawasense has made her point clear. Perhaps it's best you take your leave. After all, you've satisfied the bulk of my request. Wait. Okay, how about this? You can hire me on as a teacher. That way, I can stay on campus no problem, right? But you can't teach without a license. You don't happen to have one, do you? No, but I do have a lawyer's badge. How's that for certification? You're a lawyer? Well, that certainly is a respectable position, but it's not exactly a license to educate. Can't we work something out? I'm afraid something isn't specific enough. Although, there is always the off chance that you can serve as an outside consultant. A guidance counselor, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Like a club advisor. Do you happen to have a kung fu club? I've got a few tricks I could show some kids. No, there's nothing of the sort. And on that note, I believe each club already has an advisor assigned. That's unfortunate. Me again. 
I say it's time we hightailed it out of here. No use sitting around on our asses, right? Why don't you meet us back here and we'll go? I can't. Not until I find something for sorry, son. Suit yourself. <laughs> don't work too hard now. Confirmed. Can I help you? Actually, you already have. I didn't think you'd be foolish enough to show your face around here again. I'm sorry, but do I... Oh. They always say perpetrators return to the scene of the crime. And you just proved the old adage true, Monsieur Voyeur. Your voyeur? What are you talking about? I'm talking about your pervy little upskirt scheme. Seriously, hiding a camera under the stairs and at your age? Shame on you, sir. Yeah, you lost me. Now, if you don't mind, I'm kind of in the middle of something. Oh no, you don't. I have irrefutable proof of your crime. Why, the very shoes on your feet. You're wearing the exact same sneakers as the pervert from yesterday. And don't think they'll carry you to safety today. Oh. Okay, what is happening here? Sorry, but your evidence is my shoes? Everybody here's got shoes, young lady. In fact, I'm probably not the only person with this exact pair. Huh. Your shoe style is merely the icing on the cake. You see, before the pervert arrived yesterday, I had covered the floor around the camera with a clear polymer that shines under black light. Huh? It's an oil-based substance, so it lasts a few days. Your souls are stained with it as we speak. Uh... Which means you came bumbling back to the scene of the crime, while wearing the very evidence of your misdeeds. Lamenting your misfortune already? That's what you get for crossing the Mystery Research Club of Serio High. Mystery Research Club? Now, if you'll follow me to the faculty room, monsieur. Oh, wait, just hold on, okay? There's no way I'd have noticed an invisible substance on my shoes. I'll give you that much. But even if I did step in some mystery goo, does that really prove what you're saying? With so many people on campus, any number of them could have walked over that spot. No, only the perpetrator stepped in the coating. I know this because I was there watching your fiasco. And of course, I had the PE teacher who was with me agree to serve as witness. Why don't you just give it up already? may be gone, but fortunately, I snapped a photo of it before it got taken away. With that, 
I determined everything there is to know about your camera, down to the store where you bought it. Turns out it's an online exclusive, customized to capture high-resolution footage with an inconspicuous design. Were I to supply this information to the police, they would track down the owner soon enough. After all, the shop would have no choice but to cooperate with a police investigation. Do I need to spell it out any further? You, monsieur, are ensnared. Therefore, I think it would be wise to do what I say. Uh, let's say we have a chat. A chat? Yeah. Now, I can't give out any details, but having the cops on me would be extremely problematic. So, I'd like to resolve this as amicably as possible. Think we can come to terms here? I will agree to one thing only. Hearing the unadulterated truth. And make no mistake, I will not be misled by diversion, threats, bribes, sob stories, nothing of the sort. Suspicious. Look at me. Do I really look like a pervert who'd sneak into a school for dirty pictures? Well, no, actually. Not at first glance. Right? So drop the Monsieur Voyeur. But I were failure as a mystery connoisseur to fall for such elementary misdirection. Uh, what? No matter where or when the story is told. The perpetrators in mysteries are often those who draw the least suspicion. This trope carries over into the real world as well. So the fact that you don't look like a criminal proves nothing. Really? If you think you can fool this mystery fiend, you'd better think again. You're Kyoko Amasawa-san, right? President of the Mystery Research Club? So what if I am? I saw your flyer. Sounds like your club's in a tough spot. You're not wrong. Our current advisor got married and quit teaching, and we can't find anyone else to take her spot. On top of that, the chairman's been reluctant to bring in anyone from outside, so the MRC may be in dire straits. But your arrival marks our revival! Should I turn you in as a voyeur, it would make a fine feather in my cap. It would also prove the value of the MRC, so the chairman would have no choice but to solicit an advisor for us. Well, that all sounds fine on paper, but the real-life logistics may not play out that way. You'll need a competent professional in your area of interest. Would you think they have time for volunteer work? When you put it that way, it does seem like a long shot. Right? So here's my proposition. How about you make me your advisor? You? Advise the MRC? Why not? A Kamurocho-based detective not good enough? Uh, you're a detective? Oh yeah. I'm Takayuki Yagami from the Yagami Detective Agency. I was asked to come investigate your school. That's about all I can let slip. So then, the hidden camera was for your investigation? I'll let you deduce that yourself. 
client confidentiality and all that. But I will say one thing. I'm here to stop shady business, not start it. If he wasn't shooting up skirts, then what was he trying to see? Rather, who was he trying to see? Who put him up to it? Our staff? Ugh, so many variables! <laughs> Listen, I don't mean to interrupt, but hello? As I was trying to say, becoming your advisor could work out well for both of us. I'm not done here by a long shot. One of your teachers is bent on seeing me gone. Really? Who? Sawa-sensei. She thinks I have no business being here, and frankly, it's been hard to prove her wrong. But if I were to advise your club, it'd be all the reason I need to stay on campus. So what do you think? It's a win-win situation, wouldn't you say? Oh, and if it's experience you want, believe me, I've been around the block when it comes to mysteries. I... believe I understand. The purpose you stated for being here does fit the circumstances better than my original theory. But I will not be persuaded so easily. So, I propose a test. A test? Right this way, please. What? Hey! Who's this, sis? This is Yagami-san, our new advisor candidate. However, I intend to test him first. See if he's legitimate. Hmm. Eh, fine by me. I'm Kento Amasawa, Kyoko's younger brother. Also the MRC's bodyguard. When your sister's as nosy as mine, you've got to step up your game to keep her safe. Please have a seat, Yagami-san. After you. Oh, how kind of you. So, Amasawa-san, back to the topic at hand here. So, getting back to this test of yours. Ah, uh, yes. So, based on what you've told me, I'm inclined to drop your charges altogether. A detective setting up cameras is... believable. That being said, I'd also be a fool to take you at your word. If this is a ruse, I'd be unleashing a pervert on the school. Well, the caution is admirable. Then you shouldn't mind if I test both your skills as a detective and your character as a person. And once that's over, the club will reach a decision. We'll either accept you as our mentor, or turn you in as a deviant. I get the picture. So what does this test entail? Actually, we've been dealing with a rather risky case as of late, so your job is to resolve it. How risky are we talking? Could you tell me what the Mystery Research Club actually does? It seems like the advisor ought to know that. <clears throat> so, I founded the Mystery Research Club last year. Primarily, we function as a book club, critiquing mystery novels from many different cultures and eras. But, when the opportunity is ripe, we also engage in more involved activities. And by that, I mean solving the mysteries around us. Oh, you mean go sleuthing, like on a case. So that's what you were up to. I've got to say, as a potential advisor, I'm not exactly psyched to hear you go around looking for trouble. Oh, don't get me wrong. We don't do this for kicks, and I'm not a fan of danger. If we could all be armchair detectives, free to investigate from afar, surely that would be ideal. Yeah, don't I know it. Unfortunately, that is rarely, if ever, possible. 
Let's say our investigatory senses were to draw us toward a mystery that escapes even the school and the police. Why, letting such a case slip away would be anathema to our club's founding principles. While I do admire your passion, why put yourself at risk? You'd be safer handing it off to the authorities. Then shouldn't we hand you off to the authorities? Well, now, let's not be hasty. I take it you see my point then. Some cases aren't so cut and dry. You make some valid points. Well, it's about as risky as it is risque. Yagami-san, have you ever heard of a sugar baby? Huh? You mean a younger girl getting paid to date an older guy? You know it. Now our current case involves one such sugar baby. It seems that one of our dance club girls has grown a reputation for dating older men. Unfortunately, I've yet to pin down exactly who this is. All you know is she's in dance club? Well, I understand why you'd want to know more, but what about this warrant's investigation? she in danger? The issue at hand is that she may be doing more than dating, and it's putting her safety at risk. Well, we found this out online, so we're admittedly speculating a bit here. But apparently this girl's pretty infamous for what they call her vanishing act. Hmm. Care to elaborate? She strings the mark along, going on a few dates for an agreed-upon sum, but then she goes in for the kill. She gets a large upfront payment for promising to seal the deal, and then, poof, gone with the wind. Okay, I can see how that might make her enemies, but that's on the guy, isn't it? I mean, he's paying to date an underage girl, and he thinks he has the right to complain? You're not wrong. Problem is, her latest mark, a violent, foul-mouthed thug, isn't so self-aware. I believe rape and murder were his choicest threats, so yeah, we can't just write this one off. Oh, yeah. That's a concern. Mm-hmm. And now he has his gang roaming the streets, searching high and low for the girl who conned him. I'd say that establishes the risk clearly enough. As soon as we found out, we've been trying to find the sugar baby and warn her ASAP. Yeah, I get it now. If we don't act, she could be in very real danger. I think we're finally seeing eye to eye, Yagami-san. After all, the truly artful detective can solve incidents before they even occur. That's not quite how it works, but sure. In any case, now that the situation's clear, I'd like to get on with the test. Just tell me where to start, and I'll be there. It is said that the great Sherlock Holmes was able to freely change his appearance into that of a total stranger. From helpless old woman to shifty-eyed vagrant, he deceived the masses and never lost a lead, all thanks to a good disguise. So, you want me to go undercover? Yep. Any detective worth their salt should have no trouble with that. You're going to infiltrate the dance club as an advisor and return with a lead on the sugar baby. That is your test. Wait, you want me to teach a dance club? If it's required, then yes. I want you to win their hearts in ways I myself could not. Those girls are a close-knit group. They'd never trade gossip with someone like me. However, if a cool new stranger gained their trust, that's you, they might be more willing to talk. But how am I supposed to be a convincing advisor if I've never danced once in my life? That's okay. It's rare for their advisors to get up and do it themselves. They generally teach from a book. Oh, great. If it's any consolation, their current advisor never even shows up, so you'll already have an in. Just give them a few pointers, act authoritative, and soon enough, you'll be their closest confidant. Easy peasy. Easy peasy? To teach something I know nothing about? I'm sure you can figure that out. That is, if you really are a detective, and not some snaky imposter. <sighs> You're really putting me through the ringer, you know that? I guess I'll have to prevail with the power of vague advice. Good, then let's move. The dance club will be starting their practice any minute. They're in the gym basement, in case you didn't know. I know her test might be tough, Yagami-san. 
I think you'd make a pretty rad advisor. So good luck. Huh? Oh. Nishizono, I'd like a word with you. Hey, aren't you... Amasawa from the Mystery Research Club? You betcha. Don't worry, I come bearing good news. Oh great, the MRC. What do you want with us? We're not up to anything. Calm down, I'm not here to expose your secrets to the world. I only wanted to introduce you to someone. What are you getting at? To preface this, I noticed your club advisor hasn't been showing up much lately. Yeah, apparently he got really sick. We're lucky if we see him a couple times a month. Right, and it must be rough trying to choreograph an entire routine without him. Yeah, and we've got a meet coming up soon. It's so much pressure. I see. Then the stars really did align in your favor. Um, what? Listen, Senpai, I know we might seem desperate, but it's not like we need any favors. Don't worry, you don't owe me for this. I'm offering you a potential advisor as a token of goodwill. A potential advisor? <laughs> Let's not sweat the small stuff. The important thing is, Yakumi-san here said he'd agree to help you with your routine as a stand-in advisor. Help with their routine? When did I ever say that? Oh my gosh, really? This is just what we needed. You know, I can tell you had a certain something about you. So how long have you been a pro dancer? Uh, I'm not. Oh, oh, so modest. This is like one of those dream come true moments in a movie. I've been literally racking my brain trying to come up with a workable routine. Oh, I'm so glad that's on you now. Whoa, 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 time out. I'm missing some important qualifications here. Yagami-san, this is your Reichenbach Falls moment. You need to dive headfirst into the challenge. Don't you get it? Uh, no? Um, do you think we can get started? We've been practicing and practicing, but something about our choreography feels off. We all know our moves and everybody's got rhythm, so all that should be left is bringing our A-game. But it feels like we're still missing something, you know? That Wow factor. It's really kind of down to the wire to be figuring this stuff out, but I know we'll push through if we try. Uh-huh. So can I ask for your first impression? Does our routine need more going on, or...? Uh, you know, it's hard to say what's going on at this point. I shouldn't have to say this, but keen observation is elementary for a detective. And? And you need to tell them what you observed. You did have your eyes open, didn't you? I think your performance could use a little more flair. Flair? How so? Well, you're already in perfect sync, and everyone knows their part. But, how to put it? You were right. 
It needs something that's going to leave a lasting impact. I see what you mean. Maybe we are just kind of going through the motions here. If only we could come up with better stuff. Oh, maybe you could give us some suggestions. Ah. Oh. Let's take apart what could give you the edge you need. What if you guys also sang, like the idol groups do? Sorry? Think about it. A group who can sing and dance would be crazy, right? Huh. I mean, maybe, but can we really learn to sing on such short notice? Right. Your meat's coming up, isn't it? Why not incorporate Kung Fu? Uh, did you just say Kung Fu? Sure did. Throw a few kicks and punches, or knock the competition right out. That's actually not a bad idea. Yeah. And it's not like martial arts-based dancing is entirely unheard of. But we don't know the first thing about Kung Fu. Well, you're in luck. Kung Fu happens to be a hobby of mine. Oh, no way! That's so cool! Well, it's my own style. You won't find it in any ancient scrolls. It's flashy. <laughs> Perfect! So will you teach us? I guess I'm gonna have to. Sweet! Then let's get a quick demonstration. <laughs> let's see some ass-kicking dance then. <laughs> Wait, really? I really have to do this? Of course. How else are we going to learn? Look up some random videos? We'll get to analyze your moves, your footwork, your breathing. We'll learn from the pro. I wouldn't get your hopes up, though. What if my stuff doesn't fit your routine at all? So you're not going to help us after all? <laughs> That's pretty weak. If you're giving up after stringing them along this far, hang tight while I dial 110. Hold it. Huh? You know what? I think I can wing it well enough. I've never done this before, though, so don't get mad if it's crappy, okay? Oh, don't be so hard on yourself. You're gonna do fantastic. Okay. What we'll do first is show you the opening 30 seconds of our routine until the chorus hits. While you're watching, keep an eye out for the parts that could use some kung fu moves. Sure. Good plan. Okay, so here's how we start. <sighs> In there. Now you take it away. Oh, doubt I can top that. But you know what? May as well try. That's a spirit. Ready for the music? Okay, let's go. Oh, oh, look at oh, that! Wow. Did you see that? 
Gagami san, what was that just now? I thought you said you couldn't dance. Believe me, I'm just as surprised as you. Winning is part skill and part pulling out of your ass. I don't think a seasoned athlete could pull that off. Yagami san, that was incredible. You're not just a pro, you're a master. Wow. Well. <laughs> You're giving an amateur way too much credit here. No way an amateur moves like that. You're something else. Maybe you don't realize it, but you have a gift for this. You're totally a born dancer. <laughs> I don't know about all that. What you call a gift, I call muscle memory. Well, whatever you call it, we're gonna use every last bit of it in our routine, if that's okay. You seriously saved our necks just now, Yagami-san. Hey, I'm just glad it all worked out. Um, if it's okay to ask, could you drop by and give us more pointers sometime? Ever since our advisor stopped showing, we've barely been keeping it together. And we could all use some guidance from someone we can trust. If you guys will have me, then sure. Not sure I have many pointers left, though. Hmm. Oh, you're the best! I think it's time we headed back now, Yagami-san. Huh? Oh, sure. So, did I pass? I'd say I made plenty of headway with the dance club. Indeed you have. Honestly, I'm still in shock over how easily you won Nishizono-san over. Every time I try to approach her, she reacts like I'm there to accuse her of something. Gee, I wonder why. I'm sure the MRC has gained some notoriety. Well, all the more reason we need an amazing advisor who can keep up with us. Oh, I'm amazing now. Does this mean I'm no longer a criminal? Yeah, I really should apologize for that at some point. Also, I have another theory as to why you installed that camera. Yeah? Let's hear it. So, a higher detective shows up to covertly monitor a specific group of students. Meanwhile, spreading through the news like wildfire is the case of Akihiro Ehara, a man connected to our school. Put those pieces together, and your objective here starts taking shape. But, I wouldn't want to hamper any important detective work of yours, so for now, I'll let that theory sit. At any rate, Yagami-san, I'll go ahead and let the chairman know of our arrangement. That is to say, I'll formally request you as our advisor. That'd be great. But do you really think you'll hire me just like that? Sure, so long as you're officially considered an outside guidance counselor. I don't see why not. Also, we do need another faculty member as a supervisor, but that's more of a formality than anything. Their only responsibility is signing the paperwork. You'll still be the one running the club. Our school makes you jump through a lot of hoops just to be welcomed as a guest, huh? Yeah, sounds like they won't let in just anybody. Anyway, is there a teacher you had in mind? Yep, no worries there. The chairman actually promised to sign off on whoever we chose. Well, I made him promise might be a bit more accurate. What? Really? Man, I wish he told me. He told me the club's already had advisors and left it at that. Typical. I doubt he wants to actually keep his word. After all, if we get into trouble, he'll be directly responsible. He probably thinks the MRC is a big enough liability as it is. <laughs> I wonder why. Well, with all that said, welcome to the Mystery Research Club. Can't wait to see a real detective in action. Hey, you'll get your chance, and it's a pleasure to be on board. Oh. When you have a spare moment, could you join us in the club room for a talk? I'd like your advice on another case we're monitoring. What, you've got something besides the sugar baby? Yes, and this one may actually be even nastier. In fact, the sugar baby may be but a single thread amidst a larger, more sinister web of conspiracies. But that's a lot to digest, I know. I'll get you up to speed when you're free. Okay. Not quite sure how to process that right now, but I'll make sure to swing by at some point.
Hey guys, how we all doing? Sweating it out on some layups? Uh, who are you? My name's Yagami. I've been the MRC's advisor for all of a couple minutes, and I need to ask the basketball club a few questions. Okay. There was a student teacher who used to hang around here as recent as, what, October? Mikoshiba's the name. Oh yeah, Mikoshiba-san. Anyway, he stopped showing up out of nowhere. Any of you have any theories? Okay, scratch that. Then, what kind of teacher was he? Is he nice? Is he a jerk? I wouldn't say jerk, but he was... enthusiastic? Yeah, I mean, he did show up almost daily. The club was really good back in his day. That's probably why he had us hustling even harder than the coach. So, would you say he was on good terms with you all? I guess. Wait, where's Koda and them? Oh, from Class 2-2? I don't know. I haven't seen Matsu, Nakane, anyone. Something special about Class 2-2? <laughs> well, yeah. Koda's in 2-2, and she was Mikoshiba-sensei's star pupil. Star pupil? I do know who you're talking about, by the way. Are you saying she was favored over the others? In a way, Mikoshiba-sensei worked her harder because she hadn't played basketball till high school. See, most of us already had tons of experience by the time we joined. So, anyone starting as late as now has to be really athletic to keep up with the team. Mikoshiba-sensei knew that too. I'd say him looking after Koda did us all a favor. Wow, sounds like the model instructor. Ah, eh, if you say so. But I'm not sure Koda felt that way. Oh? Mikoshiba-sensei might have just thought it was tough love, but I think he went overboard with the teasing sometimes. Like, he'd make her shoot and then go, See? That was how not to do it. Are you saying he would mock her? Hmm... That makes it sound bad. He was doing it because he cared, I think? Hey, wasn't Mikoshiba-sensei the one who started the whole arousing thing? <laughs> He said the way she held the ball was arousing. Said it was her main contribution. That's not true. She's got a nice chest, too. That's fair. Anyway, when Mikoshiba-sensei stopped coming, the guys in 2-2 were all like, Okay, what did Koda do to him? Are you implying they had a relationship? Beats me. Mikoshiba-sensei did anything like that? He would have gotten canned on the spot. Yeah, people like to gossip, but... As they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> Maybe Koda-san's the reason he was always so fired up. <laughs> Maybe she's the reason he got fired. <laughs> so the writing on her hand, it wasn't some random insult. Um, are we about done here? Last thing, where are Koda-san and the others? Are they often this late? No, everyone's usually here by now. Uh, maybe they're still in their classroom? Okay, then I think that about does it. Back to work for the both of us, huh? Facing out on me? Look at me when I'm talking. You can't face us because you're weak. Who gave you permission to quit anyway? Newsflash, you're nothing without the club. Yeah, think about us for a second. Who has to pick up all the grunt work when you're gone? Maybe she feels special after what happened at lunch. Like people suddenly give a shit about her. Doesn't give you the right to ditch practice. Talk about selfish, am I right? Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Is that all you know how to say? You think we're letting a stuck-up bitch like you give the orders? You guys still haven't learned to play fair? 
This fucking guy. Why is your dirty old ass still here? Attention students! Be on the lookout for a creeper showing up in your classrooms! If I were you, I'd watch my mouth around a club advisor. Say what? I'm Yagami, from the Yagami Detective Agency. And your chairman just hired me to advise the Mystery Research Club. Bullshit. I guess word hasn't gotten around? Maybe I'll let a few wisecracks slide for now then. But mark my words, I'll be here every day of the week. So be on your best behavior. Uh, uh we better get to practice. Yeah, you do that. Oh, and, uh, break a leg out there, Matsu. Not very nice, are they? Are you alright? I'm fine. Kora-san, I'm sorry to spring this on you, but as I said, I'm a detective, and I need to talk about Hiro Mikoshiba. He started training as a teacher here pretty recently, right? And one day he just stopped showing up? At the time, did you notice anything strange about him? Maybe he seemed troubled, or you saw him hanging around strangers? Why... Why are you asking me? The basketball club members think you and Mikoshiba might have been close, at least at practice. They said that? Well, I suppose there wasn't much truth to what I'd heard then. Don't sweat it. Just so you know, I'm actually going to be hanging around here at the school for a little while longer. If it's cool, I hope we can find a way to be friends. See ya. Wait a sec. Earlier today, it was your voice that I heard, wasn't it? I just... never expected anyone to actually stand up for me in school. But you could say I didn't really stand up to them for myself much either. We all just treated it like it was a normal thing. Sometimes people would even laugh about it. But then, today, you guys something changed. Leave her alone. Everyone suddenly decided to take a stand like they'd seen enough. I couldn't believe it. But that first voice, the one that told them to stop... That was your voice, wasn't it, Yagami-san? <laughs> Who could say? I knew it! It was you. Thank you so much for that. Today was... eye-opening. I never realized... I never thought about how horribly I was being treated until everyone stood up for me. What's more, it made me see that I was strong. In fact, I finally stood up to the basketball kids. So you did. Is that what made you decide to quit the club? Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to play basketball in a real team. I used to read this manga that made it look so cool. In a comic, even if you're a terrible player, the team always tries to lift you up. I tried. I wanted it to work. Even if all they did was tear me down. But today... I just up and quit. That's not cool at all, is it? You did nothing wrong, Kodosan. Truth is, there's a lot of injustice in the world that goes unseen. And some people decide it's easier to be part of the problem than be part of the solution. The kind of people who only feel joy when they see others in pain. You can only do so much to make people see the light. At some point, you've just got to let him go. Do you know what I mean? Then there's no shame in quitting. But Yagami-san, I think you can only say that because you're such a strong person. Hmm, okay. In that case, we won't call it quitting. Huh? You can play. It doesn't have to be with the basketball club. If you practice, you wouldn't even need a school basketball club to get to where you want to be. 
If this sport is what you want to do with your life, I guarantee you there's going to be a path for you to take. And all you have to do is find that path. I mean, it's got to be out there. And then you don't have to call it quitting. I don't know about that. Are you sure? I mean... Wouldn't that be cheating? <laughs> Come on, try to work with me here. So... The MRC. You're the advisor? Yagami-san? Yeah. If you need anything, you just let us know. Anything at all. For example, if you hit any more trouble with those basketball club kids, you find me. Sure. You've got this. Oh, Mr. Detective. Yagami-san, right? Yeah. Shouldn't you be at practice with everyone else? Yeah, well, remember Matsun and Sakaki? You know, the two other guys I'm always hanging around? They're ready to talk to you about Mikoshiba-sensei now. Huh. Well, Detective, I think they have a lead for you. Hey. You're here on some kind of case, right? You know, Mikoshiba-sensei talked to us pretty often. I think maybe we can help. That is, if you wouldn't mind starting fresh with all of us. Oh, turning over a new leaf, are we? We kinda have to. How else are we gonna get good college recommendations? It would really bite us in the ass if you went and narked on us, so... Will you at least hear us out? Matsun and the rest are just upstairs. Please, be a nice guy. We're really sorry. Okay, I see where this is going. How many guys are up there waiting to jump me? The next floor up is for third years, right? You rope some of your senpais into this too? Wow, you don't even know us and you're throwing out accusations like that? How are we supposed to become upstanding citizens with teachers like this? It's just not fair. Fine. I'll hear you out. Tell your friends I'm on my way. Really? Awesome! Over here, Yagami-san! Sorry to drag you all the way up here for this. You wanted to talk to me? About Mikoshiba-sensei? What? I can't hear a word you're saying, man. Why don't you come closer so we don't have to shout? Yeah, let's get this over with. <laughs> <laughs> So many of you. You guys all know Mikoshiba-sensei? Nah, that's not how our senpai friends roll. They know the Yokohama Liumon. Yokohama Liumon? You mean the local gang? Hell yeah. I've got a friend who's in deep with those guys. I scratch their back by bringing them chicks to hang out with, and they scratch mine by tipping me for it. <laughs> it's a pretty sweet deal, actually. Also, We've got a little thing going. I get to drop the Liumong name if I need him to handle some business. So you sell them girls in exchange for honorary membership? You need to find better friends. Don't talk to me like you know me. I stay on their good side and I get my personal bodyguards. I work with the tools I've got to get to the top. So you got it all figured out, don't you, kid? But you're missing the big picture. 
They're gonna turn the table so fast you won't know what hit you. I'll keep that in mind. But I wouldn't worry about me right now. You're the one who's got the real problem on his hands. You get it? From now on, if you even lay a finger on us, you offend the Yokohama Leo mom, and they'll take that personally. You see what deep shit you're in here, Yagami-san? So how about it? You know how to say you're sorry? Cash for our pain and suffering. Oh yeah? How much are we talking here? A grand? A mil. If you're short, I'd be happy to hook you up with a loan shark. I know a guy who lends for the Seiryu clan Yakuza. First it's a gang, now it's the Yakuza. Keep bringing adult shit into this, I'm gonna start treating you like one. Huh? You wanna see what happens to gang members? I'll show you. You sure you wanna do that? We're gonna charge you extra. Oh, you got this shit down, Matsui. <laughs> Let's take this asshole down! Fuck him up! And stay down. Ah, oh, my eyes. Cheap shot. <laughs> Can't see. Got you now. No, you don't. Huh? What? Did he just jump off? Nah, he's just hiding in the dark, like a scared little cockroach. You guys go look for him and tell me when you find him. I'm going for a smoke. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> you got this in the bag. Uh, senpai. What do we do? You guys follow me. <laughs> we'll all smoke together till we get an update. Sure, I'll come with. Senpai's the toughest around, and the coolest. Ah, well. All for my adorable little underlings.
Tastes good, senpai? Smoking a cigarette in the classroom? <laughs> so you came all this way just to get your ass kicked. Hey, Akane! Go get the other senpais! Okay, I'm on it. You guys better watch out. If your teacher busts you smoking, won't you get in big trouble? On the other hand, you guys could use a lesson in manners. And I'd be happy to teach you. Huh? What the hell? Bastard! So this is where you were hiding! <laughs> now what? And that mouth of yours won't get you out of this! I'm taking you down! Don't give me that smug look! He's a maniac. He's too good at this, man. Hey. You mentioned compensation for pain and suffering. Uh, that still sound like a good idea? No! We were just being stupid. Could you maybe forget all that? Then from here on out, we're buds. Right? Ow! Ah, my shoulder! Holy shit, that hurts, Yagami-san! Tell me everything you know about Mikoshiba. After all, you guys were pretty close, right? Mikoshiba Sensei showed up to practice, like, basically every day. Kind of a pain in the ass, if I'm being honest. As soon as our coach would leave, it's like a switch would flip and he'd start drilling us. He'd make us do, like, ten sets of cross-court dashes. 
And if even one of us lagged behind, it meant ten more. For all of us. That made it obvious real quick. Koda was our weakest link. So Mikoshiba was especially harsh on her then. Yeah, cause she's such a freaking klutz. Even the first years got sick of her eventually. <laughs> Only thing she did right was unite the team against her. You gang up and belittle a single defenseless girl, a beginner in your sport, and you call that unity. Real classy. Listen up. Mikoshiba's parents have reported him missing. Foul play could be in the works here. He's been gone for far too long. Hey, you think maybe Koda did it? Some kind of crime of passion? This isn't the time for bullshit. Or you want to keep going? Uh, nope. I'll pass. Have you talked to Sawa-sensei yet? He probably knows Mikoshiba-sensei better than anyone. All she told me was how exemplary he was, both as a student and a student teacher. And that he looked out for you guys, out of some sort of camaraderie. Huh? She really talked him up that good? Why, something off about that? Uh, it's just... Sawa-sensei was really cold to him, no matter what he'd do. I actually brought that up to him one day, and it turns out the rumors were right. Rumors? Back when Mikoshiba-sensei was a student, one of his classmates apparently committed suicide. And Sawa-sensei suspected him of bullying the kid. I don't think he ever really got past that. He'd get all depressed sometimes. Really? Sawa-sensei thought Mikoshiba was a bully? Oh, yeah. I actually asked him about it once, but he just laughed it off. I teach English, and that's what I was focused on. So as far as I knew, Mikoshiba-kun was a good student with solid grades back then. And during his time in training, I was under the impression he got along with the students just fine. What did she really think about Mikoshiba? I'll have to press her on it. Hi there. Has Sawa-sensei gone home? Actually, she's in a meeting with the chairman. So then she's at his office? Yes. But I think they may have some visitors. Gotcha. Thanks. Suspicious. Yagami-san, those men are with the Kanagawa police. They 
said they're here to make inquiries about Mikoshiba-kun's disappearance. And they asked to see Sawa-sensei too? Yes. But I have to ask, can you tell me what's really going on? You were asking questions about Mikoshiba-kun as well. I should leave it to the police to fill you in on that. I mean, their sources are probably more recent than mine. They should have the latest details. Mikashibukun is... no longer with us, is he? Then it's just as I feared.